Hello, everybody, and thanks, fellow. It's Friday once again, and those of you who are keeping your eyes out will see that we've got. I have two lovely ladies working with me today. Um, Jackie, as ever, will be here to uh, give you all the latest on the uh, COVID and everything that's happening and furlough, etc. And we're also joined today by Amy Copeland, and she's here for a very special reason, because actually last night was a night to remember, those of you who were not tuned in. Uh, you're now watching the award-winning ICB TV. Uh, we got a major award uh, for innovation from the PQ Awards, and uh, the absolute cream on the top of the cake was that ICB was named as the accountancy body of the year. So we've always said we're up there, we're playing our part, we're uh, alive now, we're really part of the establishment, the accountancy profession, and we've beaten everybody, every single body. We are the best. So how about that? Amy, it went very well yesterday. It did. And I'm very pleased to have the awards themselves with me today. They are solid metal and um, very, ha very heavy, very chunky and um, yeah, very shiny. So um, the, the word that keeps coming to mind is coup. I think we shouldn't underestimate how significant it is that no, for the first no. time in, in PQ Awards history, it's been running for 18 years. For the first time ever, a bookkeeping organisation has won Accountancy Body of the Year. It's a very big um, and, and Graham Hambly, who is the publisher and editor of PQ and runs the awards, and he's been, you know, he's one of he's set up the magazine and everything else. Um, I, I'm so excited that I was picking up bits of what he said. I must have been, I missed a lot of it, but he did say that it's because we, we've just done so much for our members over the last 12 months, 18 months of COVID. And when everybody else was falling down on their knees and things were going to pot, et cetera, we just sailed through as if nothing had happened and sorted it all out. Um, but I think also um, our members are just so engaged with ICB that uh, we, a lot of what we get, a lot of the acclaim we get is, is because of that, because they are just so part of everything that we're doing. And, and I think that's great. So, um, Absolutely. Yeah, I, yeah, I would say these are, these are your awards. These are the awards for bookkeepers. Absolutely. And I think actually this is, you know, this is a turning point for the profession as a whole, for bookkeepers, for ICB. Um, to me, I'm just like, I, you know, this is the year that the first female jockey won the Grand National. We had the second <laughs> yeah. ever female director of the Oscars. I think it points to a bigger picture here, which is that the world of work is changing, attitudes are changing. And yeah, absolutely, last year, um, ICB and, and ICB bookkeepers certainly stood up to be counted. And it's just under no under no debate now. Um, bookkeepers provide a vital economic function, and I think yeah, yeah, we can look to a very bright future together. I think so. You're absolutely right. I mean, obviously, ICB has already won the accolade of being the International Association of the Year. But uh, you know, I think this this from our peers within our own profession is is the big one. You know, this this is great and. To think this has been won in the past by ACCA, ICAW, and all these sorts of people, and and, and they had to stand there and applaud us last night. That is brilliant. Um, so yeah, great, fantastic. Well, thank you very much for that. I, I, one, we, final, we, we, one final flash of the award. One season. final flash. Lovely. Well done. You can all pat yourselves on the back. A big yeah, round. absolutely. It's it, it's a collaborative joint effort. Uh, Team ICB and every single member of you. You've you've all done great things uh, we've all done it together and yeah this is this is i know it's 25 years but this is only the beginning we've got so much more to do so great thank you very much absolutely have a great afternoon sure. thanks thanks amy uh, talking of much more to do jackie um uh one of your uh, co uh, vice presidents last night mm -hmm. also picked up award i was delighted and that yeah. Dr. Philip Dunn, our uh, one of our directors on our main board, picked up the award last night as a, a special personality. I mean, Philip's been in the profession now for about 50 years, so half of his time has been spent with us. Um, but yeah, he's such, he's such a nice guy. He is very helpful and supportive to ICB and has been to other organisations in the past. He's been on the 
uh, AAT board and he's worked with SEMA and ECA and, and ICAW, etc. And he's very highly regarded and well respected, almost as much as he is by the Yorkshire County Cricket Club, which is, <laughs> his, I'm never quite sure if it's his first or his second. Actually, no, his second or his third, because his main love, of course, is his uh, beloved Catherine. Uh, but yeah, I'm not quite, quite sure where we come with the other. But yeah, for those of you who don't know, um, Philip is a, is a huge fan of Yorkshire County Cricket Club, does a lot for it. And in fact, Catherine also, uh, she's a, an artist and uh, artist in residence also, I believe, with the Yorkshire County Cricket Club. So she paints portraits of all the, the key people at Yorkshire and they're, they're adorning the boardroom at the Yorkshire County Cricket Club. So very well done, um, Philip, and, and much, much uh, deserved. And it's great mm -hmm. to see your... Uh, position and your input to the profession uh, acknowledged with a nice shiny PQ, which I'm sure is making its way to you up there in Yorkshire as we speak. So, Jackie, um, you've so I just like I, before I start. I, sorry, before I start, I'd just like to add my own personal congratulations to Philip because um, he's an accountant. Um, he and I have worked together on exams and syllabuses uh, for probably 20 years. I've known Philip and I have a great respect for him and I'm very fond of him. And I think it's an amazing, amazing, we have hit heads together on occasions, but he's, I respect him tremendously. Um, he's extremely knowledgeable and uh, I congratulate him. That's personal congratulations from me. Okay, now, um, as ever, I was me thinking at the beginning of the week, there's not gonna be very much to do this week, but because I wasn't here last week, um, things are sort of piled up. And all of a sudden this morning, I got about six information emails came in from HMRC at literally about 11 o'clock this morning. So I've been trying to put things together and I've got some slides for you because there's so much information to go out today that it's going to be easier for me to put them on slides and then you can go through again and hopefully look at them at your leisure. Um, some of them are uh, bits that have come up this week that are fairly new. Others are just reminders. Um, there's one or two follow ups from my technical Tuesday that I did this week with Verna that I just want to uh, confirm a couple of bits. There's a couple of uh, changes to various things that I've said in the past that I just need to confirm. So let me just uh, share my screen. And uh, okay, let's. Uh, my computer wants to start. Okay. So, a uh, quick reminder says grants four and five. Uh, we have mentioned this before. The full SAIS grant application is now open. You can apply online. Um, obviously, you know by now the eligibility criteria for that, but you do have to confirm that your um, account, that your income and your trading has been reduced because of COVID. And they have, this week, HMRC have issued some follow-up details to that. So you have to be able to have some evidence to prove that you can claim the grant. Now, they're not asking you to prove this evidence up front. They're just asking you to make a declaration. And at some stage, if HMRC think that that grant is not eligible to be claimed, they will obviously want it back and there may or may not be some penalties coming in at a later stage. Now, um, the, the first of the three criteria is that there must have been a reduction in activity compared to previous years. Now, we've spoken about this before. We are talking about the quarter from February to the end of April, so the quarter that's just finished. Now, in applying for this, of course, you can't apply as an agent, but your clients have to apply themselves. But if at some later stage it's found out that actually their income hasn't gone down based on last year, then they shouldn't be claiming. And I've had at least three technical queries coming in the last week that we're going to be discussing at ICB as to how we should respond uh, generally with our members, where our members feel that these grants have been applied for without their knowledge, and maybe they shouldn't have been applied for. And what do our members do about that? Because um, this is obviously a, an incorrect claim and must be paid back. But interestingly enough, what it doesn't say is what the size of the reduction should be. Now, I spoke to somebody this morning um, whose income has one of our members actually whose income has gone down and there was a term and I can't remember what it was she said but there was a term in there that you have to sign up to but it doesn't actually state the percentage of the reduction or the amount it just says something like a significant reduction now 
um, significant depends on the size of the business for you and your clients. So you've just got to be careful about that. Now, the sort of um, proof that you need to have is a reduction of reduced or cancelled contracts or appointments, as well as income. And what you're going to have to do if there is an investigation into the claim is to reduce the records of the dates of the reduced activity due to government restrictions. So here we're looking at invoices, we're looking at previous years, we're looking at diaries, we're looking at all sorts of things that could lead to a, 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 a genuine reduction in income and trading due to COVID and government restrictions. Now, there is a fifth grant that's going to be available from May to September. We don't know how much it's going to be yet. It's likely to be less than the 80% because the CJRS is starting to reduce down. So we're not quite sure what that's going to be yet. And I haven't yet got a date for the information coming out on that. It's unlikely to be before the end of this month, I think. Now, this week, um, HMRC have identified the penalties for incorrect uh, claiming of the grants. So if there has been um, incorrect uh, claim, it must be paid back within 90 days of the payment being made. Um, if it is found that the, pen, that the claim was made and it was deliberately incorrectly claimed, or it has been concealed that it was an incorrect, you can have, you must pay the claim back and there'll be penalty, penalties of up to 100% of the amount of the claim. However, HRC are conscious that some of these may have been claimed inadvertently. Now, I, I'm trying to think of what that might happen. It might be that they think their income's gone down, but in fact, because of late invoicing, it may be exactly the same. But if it's been claimed uh, innocently, or they didn't know that it was wrong, or they claimed it, thought it was legitimate at the time, the individual has until the 31st of January, 2022, to pay the grant back if it's been an inadvertent overclaim. So that gives us or gives members a slight breathing space for them to maybe do a bit more investigation. Um, but I've been speaking to uh, some of the other um, professional bodies uh, and various meetings I've been on this week, who uh, one of them in particular is taking great pain to go out to his members to say, you must look at these claims. And if you think it's been wrongly claimed to strongly advise your clients that they should be repaying this money back. So very similar to the sort of thing that we've been doing for CJRS, but of course CJRS, our members have been able to put those claims in. SAIS grants, we haven't been able to, we've, it's been left up to, up to them. Now, there's another comment about scams here. Now we've mentioned this nearly every week now, but there are some very specific scams going out that again, purport to be from HMRC and it's to do with the SAIS grants. And it says, you're entitled to a SAIS grant, click here to make the claim. Now, that will then take you straight into the scam. And if you then start to give them information, uh, you're involved in that. Now, you do need to make, be very careful, particularly if even if you have family members or if you have uh, clients who perhaps are vulnerable, do make sure they're aware of these and try to watch out to make sure that they don't click on this. The email addresses look very similar, but they will have a slight change in the email address when you investigate it, but anybody there might, might not know that it's that if it's an email. If it comes through on the telephone, I think we've spoken about this before, um, just be careful not to ring, not to speak to them on the phone, but not to ring back the number they give you, but to ring HMRC and just check and go directly to HMRC. And we talked about this on Tuesday with Werner and um, I think it was Sarah, who said uh, brilliantly suggested that actually if you can also use another phone to ring HMRC back on so there's no comeback on your phone. So that's what's come out in the penalties this week. I'm sure we're going to hear more about this as it goes. Other bits of HMRC information that have come out this week. Um, tax credit renewals packs are going out over the next six weeks. If any of you have got clients that are claiming those, if you're being asked to provide figures for that or give information that's in the process of going through because we're rapidly heading into annual uh, reapplications for tax credits. Now, if you have someone who's applied for a tax refund, because uh, obviously they've done a self-assessment and they're re reapplying, apparently there are some letters going out which are officially from HMRC, but which do seem a bit harsh in their wording. Now, I've picked this up from basically social media and various other emails from, from colleagues outside uh, the ICB. 
and it looks very much as though they're uh, almost doing an inspection, uh, an investigation before they pay you back your tax refund. Now, I was at a meeting on a Tuesday with HMRC and they were talking about late payments for tax and the fact that HMRC are trying to be much kinder in the wording it uses. And I think these letters are going to be rewritten. So if you do get someone who's had uh, what they think is quite a, a strong, strongly worded letter from HMRC, apparently what they have to do is they have to go out and fill out form R38 online. Now I actually went online and tried to fill this out and put some bogus information and got through to the end. It's just a form with all your personal details in it. Um, you, you fill it out online and I think you then print it out and send it in. I don't think it's one you can submit online. So if you've got anybody that's ringing you because they've had a nasty letter from HMRC, assure them that everything's fine, deal with it, and we should be fine on that one. Now, HMRC also sent out a new set of questions on postponed VAT accounting. Now, this is the import VAT. When you're importing goods into the country, you're doing postponed VAT. So basically, you're putting the in and out. You're not actually paying the import VAT. But it's going through in box one and box four of the VAT return. Um, now, what I've done with those questions is I've selected the ones that I'm pretty certain are uh, useful to our members based on questions we've had. How do you enter it in the VAT return? I've put them into our Brexit hub. So if you go onto the ICP website, go into resources, go into the Brexit hub, under the FAQs at the bottom of the page, I've actually put a, a section in there called, I think it's questions and answers from HMRC. I've listed them there with the answers from HMRC and you might find those useful if you're still looking at how you're actually going to do postponed VAT. Now, this came out this morning. There's a lot of information on there, so I just copied it on there. You don't really need to read it all. Anybody who uses HMRC manuals, um, the, you know, the online technical manuals, if you're looking for some really specific technical information, um, HMRC are always looking for feedback on these manuals. They've had a project going for about a year now where they're trying to improve the manuals, make them more user-friendly for people outside HMRC to read and understand and they are asking for feedback now if you've used it recently there's been a generic uh, heading on those manuals that said this is still being updated for brexit that is now gone because most of the manuals i think if it's anything to do with brexit have now been updated but hmrc is still asking for feedback so if you do go into one and you find there is a problem on the various pages there are some links to gov.uk where you can put some feedback if there's anything you really sort of bug you about them, please do give them feedback because they are working on that and trying to um, improve the situation. So as I say, there's some uh, text saying report a problem with the page for any typos or anything like that. And you can sometimes hopefully get a reply if you want one to that. So information on manuals and feedback. Now, this is one that Verna gave us on uh, Tuesday. One of the questions that cropped up on Tuesday when we were talking about the MTD and the new MTD uh, things that are coming online is the, uh, the ever, ever go ongoing questions about where does the digital link start when you're doing making tax, uh, tax for di making tax digital. And the normal VAT notice 700 stroke 22, they've actually got some more examples now in there is about what constitutes a digital link. So if you're still uh, concerned about some of that or you're not quite sure, haven't had a chance to look at it yet because it literally only came in. I think, the, I think we used to say we did it this week. Have a look at that and see if there's anything that can help you. Now, uh, I need to send out a personal apology to anyone I've spoken to recently because I've taken some calls about daily EPOS sales. So these are sales that come in from online platforms, from TILS, and the recording the daily sales. And uh, you get your Z readings or you get uh, a report comes out or a statement comes out from online marketplaces like Amazon, eBay, that sort of thing. Verna did confirm on Tuesday that you do have to put in daily sales into your accounts. Now, I was under the impression that you, as long as you have the information, you could put a weekly or a monthly total in. That is actually not true. So my apologies, it has to be done on a daily basis for VAT. And also it will need to be done for MTD as well when it comes into self-assessment. So 
uh, that's something that you're going to have to do. So sorry, guys, if you've gone in, put them in weekly, I'm really sorry, but you are going to have to go back and change them today to get your VAT sorted out. Now, a uh, quick update on making tax digital for self-assessment. Um, again, an apology. Um, a slight change to the dates. Now, this was in the article that I put out in the newsletter, and uh, I have changed it in the newsletter and online. Now, MTD for ITSA commences on the first accounting period that starts after the 6th of April 2023 not the 1st of April, as I put in. Now that makes a huge difference. And I only really clicked with this. Uh, it makes a huge difference. Now, if you think of your self-assessment uh, tax returns that you do for self-employed clients, normally the fiscal year, which is the 6th of April to the 5th of April, if you run your accounts from the 6th to the 5th of April, then that's not a problem. But you will have to start your first accounting period on or after the 6th of April 23 will be the 6th of April 23. So if that's your tax year, your accounting year matches the tax year, you're going to have to start your MTD on the 6th of April 2023 when the whole thing becomes mandated. And what I want to do is I want to follow that through because, so that's the one there. If your accounting year starts on the 6th of April, your first reporting quarter commences the 6th of April 2023. Now follow that through on a monthly basis. So if your accounting year starts on the 1st of December, then your MTD reporting will start on the 1st of December 2023. But if your accounting year starts on the 1st of April, that is before the 6th of April 23. So actually, if you follow that through, the first accounting year after the 6th of April 23 means you don't have to start until the 1st of April 2024. Now, that's only a period of six days, so it's going to make a huge difference. It's going to be a whole year's delay in reporting that. So uh, you'll need to go and have a look at your clients and see what days you use. Obviously, you can come in earlier than that. So if you're using the 1st of April, you could come in in April 23 or earlier still, that's not a problem. But I have to say, I have changed that online. So my apologies for putting for missing that 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 date there. Um, the pilot scheme is going to be running and should be well up and running by then. So if you want to join earlier, then, you know, I think probably the sooner you join, the easier it's going to be. Um, now, Asian online services account. Again, we remember we have the agent online services and the agent uh, services account. There were two of them. We're still getting concerns and queries from members. Got one at the moment who seems to be waiting an awful long time for a response for an agent services account. Um, but there have been changes and there are changes going through. Now, I spoke to one of our members this week who very kindly sent me a load of screenshots from her uh, agent services account, which are... are, are um, anonymized so we can use them and but I want to go and show you exactly what's the changes that you can expect to see now at the moment these new changes apparently being piloted with five agents that they selected have no idea who they are um, and further agents are being contacted so they can trial the system but I think some of this information may be just appearing automatically for some of our members I'm got a little bit confused this week about what's there for everybody and what's still being piloted. Um, from this month, some of the larger firms are being contacted to join, to join the scheme, but I don't yet have a date when this goes live for all agents. But basically, if we're looking at the agent services account, for those who have one, this is agent services account. When you log in with your ASA code this is the sort of thing you will see now you may see this already or this may be new to you and this will have your various services that you can offer so if you click on those and the ones that uh, i've the hmrc have sent out details for this week are for paye and we have been giving you authority to share these with you so if at that stage you click on to paye you will should see a list of your paye clients now, I didn't think we were seeing clients yet, and this is why I'm confused, because what Verna said 
on Tuesday was that you can't see your clients under your agent services account. So, oh, hang on, I'm still getting confused. Agent online services, sorry. This is the list that you see in your agent online services account. You will see your clients from this screen, not from the ASA screen. So if you then click on a client, and this is PAYE, what you will see are all the payments. Now I've only done one screen and this goes on for several screens. The amount of charges that have been made and say, this is PAYE, I don't know whether there's one available for VAT yet. The amount of charges, the amount of credits, the payments that have been made and a list of any amounts that are overdue. So this is bringing you so that you can see all the payments and credits that your client will possibly have made and what's outstanding. Now, I don't think we've ever had this before. We have one member who has got this information because it's been sent to me already. So I'm not 100% certain how this is going. I will have to come back to you with some more detail on this, this when I've got it. So they're gradually trying to give you more and more information on your clients. Now, this is where we go into the agent services account. Sorry, this is why I'm getting confused. Now, they have added a new service this week. Now, uh, one of our members mentioned it sent me the screenshot. The Making Tax Digital for Income Tax has now appeared at the top of your ASA services that you can offer. Now, funnily enough, I also got this screen from HMRC at about 10 past 12 this morning, but this came from a member. So, you know, we have members who are ahead of the game anyway. So these are the services that you can manage through your ASA account. And there are then some drop down menus. Now, at the moment, if you click on making tax digital for income tax, it doesn't have that much in it, but they are going to be adding to that fairly rapidly. Uh, authorization and requesting an authorization and copying across an authorization will be will appear in NTD for income tax the same as it does for all the others so if you've got these accounts at some stage next time you log on do start to look for any changes uh, that you that you might have now um if you click on the NTD for income tax this has not come from HMRC I think this has come from the member this is the screen that she now sees that you can get authorization copy your clients across uh, and, and do various other things. Um, but if you click on other services, this one here, sign in using the government gateway, what our member says is if you do click on that to sign in, what you get is you cannot access the service from this page. Now I have seen this before, so you have to go back to the home page and start again. So. I think what's happened at the moment is HMRC are trying to update this, but not all the links are in place yet. So I know we've got quite a few members who are getting very confused and uh, there's a lot of things that are really not going wrong. Now I'm gonna feed this back to HMRC, to my contacts there, because uh, I don't know how long this is gonna go on for, but apparently it is very, very confusing at the moment. So, okay. So that's all I have on uh, on that. So let me uh, stop sharing my screen right. and have a look at some questions. Yeah, let's have a look at the chats. What have we got in here? Uh... Uh, oh, Susanna's come back with my um, with my comment on the income. It says significantly re reduced when you're applying for the SAIS grant. So still just, uh, it depends how much significantly is. I mean, if your turnover is very small and you, you're a couple of hundred pounds down, it's significant. But if your turnover is large, you could be looking at several thousand pounds. But I think, um, yes, Steve says it's significant reduction, which is helpful as always. Yes. Um, and, oh, Esther, good afternoon, Esther. How are you? I've seen this and I see all this since 2015 where uh, the agent services accounts will be beta trying, uh, they're under beta trial at the moment. So lots of things going on, I think, with HMRC. We will try and sort all these out for you. It's very confusing at the moment. And my apologies, I haven't got my head around it all yet, but I will do. And lots of congratulations there, Gary, in the, in the chat. Yeah, yeah, quite a few there, Michael, Dave and uh, Sarah. I've got a few more here as well, actually, in a minute. But, um, uh... 
Margaret Crawford. Hello, Margaret. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Gary. Not Gary. Gary with one R, but never mind. Um, as I always say, I'm very proud of my R's. Um, well done to the award all at ICB, Susanna Whelan. Thank you very much. Um, that's great. It's good to get that. So if we look at the questions. Right. right. A bit more serious, these. Yeah, Donna's saying, if a company receives a commission payment from a company in the EU, would this income be under the reverse charge? They receive these payments when their clients take out services from an EU company. The EU company also provides a service to the UK company, and this is subject to the RC on its invoice. Thank you. My gut reaction is, uh, yes, it will be um because you're oh no that's income isn't it um reverse charge is normally for for payments so i think it will come into you as if it's income it'll probably come in at zero rated i think because income from the eu i think is now zero rated income from abroad um but i'd have to uh i'd have to check on that well, um, bev arnold says afternoon read a size Say Say Are we comparing April 2021 with April 19 as per the furlough scheme? It just says the previous year. But last year you were probably closed down anyway. So if you've I haven't seen that. It just says on the previous court previous year. So again, Bev, I'm gonna have to check on that and get back to you, I think. And we've got one here from Annie. That's Annie Mus. Um Regarding VAT postponement, the monthly postponement import VAT statements, MPIVS, only show the actual VAT due, which I understand goes into boxes one and four. Yep. But are we meant to manually calculate the figure for box seven? Do you know where I would get that figure? <clears throat> well, I would imagine that you've got import uh, invoices for it, which would have the, the net values on it. So what should happen is if you have the net value in box seven, you'll, you'll put it into your accounts uh, as the cost of your goods coming in. And the VAT should be at 20% of that, which should match your statement. That's how I think it's going to work. Because um, you'll put it in when you put the invoice in. Sarah says you would get that from your purchases. Which yeah. Is, yeah. Right, yeah. Okay. Another congratulations there from Sue Evans. Uh, just to say that last night we, we had a very rapid response to our... Um, tweeting of our award and uh, linking it in to everybody else um and and we had uh for the likes of training link were, were very quick then fluidly accountancy manager i realize then we had alison ball from the usa i hope you're listening in again today alison that was very nice of you thank you very much uh kirsty singen dawn hopkins our party girl from wales uh ideal schools chrissy applin was very quick to to jump in there and we've obviously had a, a well, not obviously, but we've had a lot of um, congratulations from around the world from our various offices. So Matthew Addison and Amanda Linton in uh, Australia, for, uh, Greg, who's in New Zealand, uh, Nuraya from Azerbaijan, Helen from um, Ukraine. And I think we've also had some from Kazakhstan and from various other places. Henry Ong. Hello, Henry, if you're uh, listening in, I know you do. Uh, from the Philippines, always good to have you in. And I know we've had a couple of your uh, members from over there, I should be members from over there coming in. <laughs> Gary, Gary, sorry, Dawn's coming to say, I don't know what you mean, Gary, I don't know how to party. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dawn, I know you don't. Um, but anyway, we'll, 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 we'll cast that one to one side. Anybody that was at the, <laughs> the last conference we had will we'll know exactly how well uh, Dawn can party. But anyway, um, <laughs> right. And uh, yeah, just one thing I do want to say is thank you very much to P2. They put on the awards last night. It was the 18th awards, as Amy already mentioned. And uh, Graham Hambly, as always, hosted him. He did a good job last night, actually. Um, I know from doing the Lucas last year that when you're looking into a vacuum and trying to imagine what's going on in the distance, it is really, really difficult. But uh, he did well. Uh, I must have tuned in late because I didn't see the comedian this year because uh, BQ was <laughs> well known for normally a quite risque uh, and occasionally um, embarrassingly blue comedian who comes on first and, and takes the rise out of the profession in general and uh, uh, Graham and PQ magazine in particular. But anyway, um, and so um, I think we've got a fair bit there. Oh, yeah. Um, Mark Rutter and Shauna from um, Open Study. Uh, thank you very much. 
Mark was one of our um, first ever colleges, actually, and we were with Mark uh, when we were all wearing slightly different hats for many, many years. So it was, it was good to know that you're still following us. And um, we also had um, Matthew, who was um, one of our, Matthew Burrell, or Burrell or something we call him, but it was definitely Burrell, I think, who uh, worked with us and then went on. He's now working in the, the pensions industry. He's in a, um, a sort of a, a political advisor and various things in the pension industry. He came through. So thank you very much for that, Matthew. It's always good to have everybody there. And for those of you, um, well, you won't have known him, but last night we got together as a, as a team to watch. And then when we won the award, I had to uh, rush next door and, and onto a, a different screen and thank everybody. So we, we had a very nice night, actually. We had a good time, a few reminiscings and various other things. And uh, as part of that, I introduced a lot of people to this thing behind me. I don't know if you can see that. That's actually a 13 foot wide pen and ink sketch of uh, Bloomsbury Square. And the reason is that 25 years ago when we set up our first office was in Bloomsbury Square. And if I move to one side, that, Blue door in the middle, you can't see it really, but the blue door in the middle there is number 20, which was our office. And um, so that's where we were. And we got a lovely lady by the name of Grace Meeking. Uh, June and I, um, we hadn't got any money in the uh, company at that stage, so June and I bought this uh, pen and ink sketch from Grace. Grace was a lovely lady who lived in Windsor, where we lived at the time. And what she did, she went and she photographed the entire uh, four sides of the square, flattened them out and then sketched them. So there it is. It's a historical record. Each uh, various things are uh, annotated at the top there. This is a particular house. This is number 20, etc. And the rather large building, which always takes over here, is the um, Liverpool Insurance Building. If it was then. It's, it's now um, some high class shops and some serviced offices. Um, it, sort of overpowers but actually I think that's only about um, two-thirds of the size in proportion to everything else and she had to do that because otherwise it would have taken up half the uh, half the screen anyway it, it covers one quarter of the uh, entire square so anyway, that's, that's why that's there and that was in our uh, first ever boardroom mm -hmm. and uh, when we moved out um, you know it has been difficult on occasions to find somebody or somewhere to put a 13 foot painting and it, it's we're not very popular with removal companies who uh, have to <laughs> sort of strap it up and stop it bending or twisting because it's covered in glass and you know we don't snap it and everything else so um, and aside there but anyway have we got some more questions in jackie have i seen actually i was going to say about that picture it, it if, if you don't know bloomsbury square it's one of those lovely squares in london with a with a park in the middle and i was when i was working at in the institute the first time i was based there with gary and june and the rest of the staff in the office we used to walk through that park every day to go and catch the train or the bus home yeah. so yeah it's beautiful beautiful area yeah it's, it's it is nice there and uh it, you know it looked after part of the bedford estates most of the stuff around there um but anyway it's incredible but uh, no, it's 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 nice to remember these things, and uh, you know we had a lovely office, and most of the bits are lying around somewhere. They've been moved into various offices, and some of them chopped up and made smaller, and others adapted into different things. But no, it, it was it was good fun, and um, it wasn't that we were absolutely full of money or anything. But uh, June and I were busy driving around London looking at various offices from. Um, uh, sort of oversized cupboards at some extortionate rate, rent. And we, um, we stopped on the top of Bloomsbury Square because we were running late for an appointment because we couldn't find the next office that we were going to. And there's a big sign out there, short-term rental uh, due to refurbishment. So we walked around the corner of the Bedford Estates office and said, uh, is it all of the building? They said, yes, yes, it's, it's five floors. And going, all right, well, how much is it? They said, well, how much have you got? Mm -hmm. So we said, we haven't got very much. She said, well, on the basis that we can ask you to move out at a month's notice, and that's likely to be within the next seven months. Yeah, let's make it. Let's make a deal. And we did. We got it for a fantastic amount of money. And I think we were there for um, a couple of years because they didn't refurbish quite as early as they thought. So we were very pleased. Um, I think the business expenditure was biggest expense was not actually paying the rent, but just doing the decoration and, and getting everything finished. But so, yeah, so I think some lovely times. And, uh, you know, we've got pictures of when we started all that. And uh, Prince Michael joined us not long afterwards. And the Earl of Kintour was with us almost from day one as our, as our first um, patron. Prince Michael, obviously, is our royal patron. So, um, yeah, it, it's good to look back on. It's good fun. 
Jackie, anything else coming up in there or not? Uh, no, I haven't had anything else yet. Um, I will pick up Donna and Bev's questions uh, and get back to them both. So, okay. um, well, I need to mention something that I know you're involved with, and that is that um, we've come across something which I'm causing, calling Munchausen by Bookkeeper. Um, Obviously, we've just won an award as, as the best in our profession, which is which is absolutely brilliant. And, and we're already in the International Association and all this sort of stuff. Um, one of the things that I've been finding a little bit upsetting recently is that, you know, we've really tried as best we can to get everybody's queries answered all throughout the COVID. And there have been occasions when we've fallen down a little bit. And I, I know you've been very quick to tell us when we haven't quite got things done. So we've taken on additional staff, we've taken on additional firm people, etc. And, you know, we've, we've done what we can. However, Lucy Brown joined us um, last week. and uh, She's come on as our Director of Professional Standards. And one of the things we've asked her to look at is how quickly we respond and how quickly we give out information. So we've done a bit of research. And one of the things that has cropped up is that a lot of people actually seem to be saying things that aren't true. Now, we don't normally bring this to your attention, but I'm going to now because I'm, I'm a bit at a, to a loss as to why this is happening and why I called it much houses. But... Um, we have a spate of people who seem to like going onto forums and moaning that we're not giving them any sort of response. Well, we are. And I, I yeah, we're all, we're all a bit of a loss of this. But the thing is, because they're taking up so much of our time with these, that is obviously robbing us of real time to answer proper queries. And um, we had a gentleman, and funnily enough at the moment, the, the, the examples I've been given are all men, so I don't, I, we, we won't, we won't say that's always the case, but anyway, um, went on to forum. I don't know what's wrong with ICB. They're not responding um, to my things. And uh, I, I haven't received a newsletter for months and this, that, and the other. So he rang in and uh, we had a word with him and then he rang in and complained again. So um, one of our members of staff decided to look into this and she spent quite some time researching everything, checked out his email address. Was there anything else wrong? Was it OK? Yes, everything was fine. Everything seemed to be working. She couldn't see any reason why it didn't happen. She sent him a, uh, an email. He got that. Why wouldn't he be getting it? So she then talked to uh, Alex, Alex, who sometimes hosts this, and he looked into what can now Alex can actually go in and find out where the emails went and et cetera, et cetera. And we were able to show that actually the emails had been opened. So the newsletters were being opened and read. So we went back to the gentleman and sort of said, look, I'm sorry, but you have opened emails. This is the day and the time that you open those emails. So he said, oh dear, sorry, yes, I, I must have forgotten. Two days later, he unsubscribed. I mean, there's got to be something wrong here somewhere, you know. They, they, we just, we just will not have this, and and you know, we will. I think we we just got to look at this and decide what to do about it because we had another person went onto the forum within the last couple of days to say he's had no response from us at all. Can't understand what he's paying his fees for. Now we've been back in. We've had five, sorry, four conversations with him this month. Eight in April, seven in March five in February. Now, if that isn't responding, I think you probably need to find another professional body because I don't know how much response you get from others, but you certainly, I would think that's, you know, that's a fair level of response. So what is that? Uh, 12, 19, 24 responses, and we're not responding to you, seriously? Um, and, you know, we've got another... Uh, man that was on there saying that uh, he's not very happy with the response he's getting from us. Um, we're not very helpful when he talks to us. This particular member, member since 2010, he's got 20 pages of comments on the database. Now, each of those pages is 10 comments. So that's 200. It's actually 203 comments, I think it is. Um, now, the thing is, we are talking to these people, so I don't see why they're saying that we're not. Now, one of the other problems that we're coming across, as I say, this is the reason why I'm talking, bringing Jackie into this, really, is that Jackie is finding that people are asking for quite in-depth assistance, which normally we're very happy to give, but some people seem to be asking the same question over and over again. And we're sort of getting the idea that perhaps you're using it instead of training. You know, you're, you're asking... 
some really difficult questions, but not getting the point or just adding to the question each time you ring back. And Jackie, you, you're finding it a bit difficult. Obviously, we never we we really never try to say no, but um, it, we're going to have to start making some judgment calls as to to whether it's in line with what people are entitled to. I think, aren't we? Yes, I think so because. Um... Also, some of them are very specific to your uh, maybe a particular business and asking you to look in and check their figures, which, of course, as a membership body, we can't do um, because we're there to try and give you general support, general advice. We do have a, a, another line that we can transfer you to. Um, I have to say this. There have been some um, queries that I'm struggling with answering. And I think you have to also think when you get to this stage is if. If it's something that you're really struggling with and you really can't find the answer, um, are you actually working with the correct, you know, are you being able to offer the correct service to the client? So I'm not saying that we won't help you, but certainly I'm getting an awful lot of, in, as Gary said, in-depth questions, um, which I don't think always ICB should be in a position to answer. No, so I no. said we might help you. Yeah, and we've had a couple of things recently where people have sent us, sent us complete sets of accounts and saying, I, I can't quite get the balance right. Can you look yeah. through this for me? I mean, that really is not what a professional body should be doing. I mean, we're there to help you as much as we possibly can, but we can't be another member of your team. Um, it's, it's a difficult one because, you know, we are known for being helpful. We're known for being supportive and, and we are a community. But it, it is becoming increasingly concerning to us that um, some people are just not willing to sort of bite the bullet and get on with this. They, they keep wanting this sort of support. And we, we can't really comment on individual sets of accounts. We shouldn't be looking at those accounts. Um, you know, and, and, you know, it puts Jack in a very difficult position when, you know, you're asking, oh, well, should this go in that column, that column, or should it go under this, that, and the other. That, that's the sort of decision that you have to make for yourselves based on your training and if you feel that you are unable to make those decisions you may need more training you may need something but it's not really a technical support line now i don't want you all to stop asking for support that's not what this is about all i'm saying is that you know we are looking at the, the level of support that people are asking for um and you know just just to make sure that we are we are doing our job properly but we're not overstretching what we're doing by going into areas which are really beyond the standard you were grinning there jackie what are you reading? Yeah, i was just looking at d's comment i'm not sure we can read that out d but i agree with you i don't think we can read i don't think we should read that d's comment out actually it's very it's very subtle but i'm not sure we should read it out um, oh, one from, from uh, Lee Chapman. I had an excellent experience with IC support on a payroll query. Felt special, as it was Queen Jackie herself oh. who came back to me. There are just I spoke, I spoke to Lee earlier this week, but that was that was quite a straightforward one for me to deal with. Hopefully I, it was the right answer. Um, and Sarah, Sarah says that I think if it's at that stage, ICB should look at the practice license and the code of practice, and you're supposed to be confident before you offer the service and also qualified to so do. Yes, Sarah, absolutely right. Yes, but you're right, Sarah. I mean, the thing is that in the early days, it is difficult sometimes to have the confidence. Um, what we're looking at, though, really, is that um, it's not really the people at the, at the beginning. It's, it's people who've been with us for quite some yeah. time. And I think they're moving on to sort of perhaps different clients or something. Um, and as I say, look, if you if you have a technical query, we don't want you to stop. And I'm sorry if we are a bit slow in getting back to you sometimes. And this is not an excuse. This is not the reason why we're not doing it. It's one of many, um, most of which are, are of our own doing. But it was just that when we did the analysis, we were just amazed at the, the, the number of people who were coming back repeatedly. And they just coincidentally happened to be the people that were moaning most on the social media. So um, I we're not trying to restrict you from doing anything it, else at all. It's also been very interesting that obviously with Brexit and coronavirus as well, but particularly with Brexit, because that is so new and so different and so alien to what we've been used to with our EU transactions, which we all knew exactly how to do with EU transactions. And it is very, very complex indeed. And those are the ones that I have to say, I'm desperately trying to help you, 
but I can only really give you out the basic information. But when it comes down to uh, the detailed stuff, if um, we also have, I'll tell you one thing we do have, we have members who are picking up clients now who are really struggling with the Brexit stuff and have got their accounts and asking our members to get it sorted for them. And that's, I think, where a lot of the issues are coming in. And I'm desperately trying to help several people at the moment on that. But as I say, there's a limit to how far I can go. So certainly in the last year, the queries have become far more complex because the situation you're working with is far more complex. And just a final comment on the Brexit, that and things. Um, I still don't think HMRC and the software companies have quite got it all together. Um, one of the queries I'm getting a lot of that I don't think I can answer is where you've got clients who have to charge European VATs, <clears throat> um, how are you going to do that? Because if you've got people who are charging EU VAT in the various countries and they're having to register for EU VAT in the countries, or if they're <clears throat> sending lots of stock abroad and they're moving it to, say, uh, the Netherlands, setting up a VAT account in the Netherlands and selling it from there. The biggest problem that we've got at the moment is I don't think, and I may be wrong, uh, that the software companies are geared up to this because this is a massive change for them to introduce that. And of course, HMRC will only really deal with VAT within the UK. So if you're doing an export, you're exporting at zero rate, but you're having to charge import VAT in the various countries or VAT in the countries, that's not part of HMRC's remit. And this is where the, the, the whole situation is becoming much more complex, that we're now dealing with different VAT authorities. And that's what I'm still trying to get my head around. It should be easier from July when the EU brings in their new VAT scheme, where you can just register in one country and, and then you're back to the old distance learning like we were before. Yeah, Sarah just kind of said you're not supposed to be practicing on your client. Uh, they're paying a fee on the basis that you know what you're doing. It could give the ISO a bad reputation if we're not yeah. careful. Sarah, as always, very level headed there. Yeah, absolutely yeah. agree. Absolutely um, agree, Sarah. Yeah, and uh, very nice to see. We've got a comment here from um, Naraya from Azerbaijan. Naraya Novozova, who's our agent across there. We always feel support from ICB, and our members are very proud of being a member of the ICB global team. Niraya, that's wonderful. Um, I've enjoyed some wonderful times in uh, Azerbaijan um, and enjoyed some great hospitality and uh, has seen some great changes in the country from the first time I went there to, to the, uh, the latest, I won't say last, the latest time I was there when uh, the, the whole country had been completely transformed. Something to do with that um, Sticky black stuff they found out in the estuary, but uh, yeah, it was excellent. But uh, Naraya, lovely to have you on. And yeah, we love to support you. And uh, you've now got Alina um, working very closely with you. Um, so yeah, uh, we, we have, we're hoping for big things from, from all of that region. Um, are we, I um, think that's all of the questions that we've had. You've done the one from Donna, have you? I missed uh, that. I will go back to Donna independently to on that one. I've got a, I've got a list. Um, I will just say that the um, the webinar that we did on Tuesday with Verna is now up on the website. I do apologize. I've had a very dodgy uh, internet signal this week. And some of it, I watched it earlier just to see if there was anything I needed to say for today. And some, I, it does freeze on occasions, but I think you can get, you, it's, it's a few areas where the, the internet went down. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's up there now for you to see some lots of questions answered that Verna did. And we're hoping to have a meeting with Verna, a technical Tuesday with Verna once a, once a quarter. So um, because over the next two years, we've got a lot of developments coming on um, once we see ourselves out through the end of the pandemic. And then it's starts to come in and VAT for MTD, VAT for all businesses, the transfer across, there's a lot going on uh, on uh, VAT and MTD at the moment. So Verna's quite happy to come back. We're looking at doing that once a quarter with her. We're also looking at setting up some with some of the software companies as well on a technical side. Caroline Betts, thank you very much for that. Um, yeah, as I say, don't please stop uh, asking for advice. We are here to do that, but we can't get too technical. And yeah, if we don't answer things correctly or we're a bit slow, then we expect you to give us a kick 
because we're here and you're expecting your professional body to support you. Um, I, would, I just take it very personally. I suppose perhaps I shouldn't, but I do take it very personally if people go on and say that we're, we're rubbish. Uh, and actually, there's, there's no justification for it. So, um, you know, if, yeah, anyway, we're, we're, I think we'd probably better leave it as that. Uh, the um, webinar link has just gone up. Yeah, together. Faye is asking, how do you get into Technical Tuesday as I couldn't register? Um, the link has just gone up in the chat line. So if you click on that, it's you will have to log in to your MyICB to get access to it because it's members only. But once you get into there, um, go into the link. As I said, it's from the tax, the Tuesday one is from the tax agent hub in resources, right hand side, MTD webinars, and it should be there. Both furnace are there. So you should just be able to get it by logging into your MyICB and going in through the website. Great, I think that that's probably about it. We're just coming up to the hour. Um, just to reiterate, we are very proud to that ICB TV has won an award uh, as the biggest innovation in the accountancy profession in, over the last year. Um, yeah, Can I just we, say, Gary, I'm, I know it seems as though it's always you and I, but actually, as it's not just obviously Thank Fellow, it's Friday, there are all the other guests that we've had on the that Graham went through and mentioned because we've had an awful lot of external yeah. guests on as well. It's the whole, yeah. it's the whole thing. Yeah, it is. It's it's everything. It's it's not just thank for the Friday, as you likely say. But um, at the risk of missing a guest, a guest I thought I'd just leave it as uh, a, a little bit more general. So yeah, oh, yeah I know. <laughs> uh, and also, of course, the people who, who make it happen in the background. You know, normally it's it's Alex or Iris. It's Iris today. It's it's Alex other days. Um, they're the ones that keep following up with anything that you ask for and putting up links and various other things, but also keeping those on air as much as they can. Um, so thank you for those to those as well and to the marketing department for pushing it out and making sure the emails get out and you can log on, etc. Now we do get a lot of non-members coming into ICB TV, which is good. And then we try our hardest to convert them afterwards because we think, well, this is it. But you, 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 you can get a lot more, not just ICB TV. So um, that, that's going very well at the moment. We are getting a lot of people crossing over from other awarding bodies or attempting to. Actually, a lot of them don't manage it because they're not up to our exams. But the, we, we make them take exams. We um, you know, we, we don't do it on a handshake or a, 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 nod, a nod and a wink or anything like that. It, it's got to be properly done professionally. So, so that's good. Um, and yeah, we are um, increasingly being seen as the voice of the whole profession of, of bookkeeping. And uh, we, you know, what, what can we say? So, ICB, the 2021. Um, we are the um, accountancy body of the year. I think that is such an achievement. And it's not just because of us that run uh, the Institute on your behalf. It's obviously because of yourselves, you people out there, you're gaining huge reputations. And that, that's what it's all about. It's all about reputation. And we keep pushing and you keep pushing. And so let, let's may, may that continue for a long, long time ahead. So everybody, um, I don't know what it's like in your part of the country, but down here apparently it's going to rain all weekend. So um, there's sure to be somewhere, somebody somewhere saying, oh, it'll be good for the garden. Uh, personally, I, I like a nice warm garden to walk in, not a wet one, but <laughs> who cares? So have a lovely time. Thank you very much for coming on and spending a little bit of your very valuable time with us. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next week and uh, have a great weekend and a good week until then. Bye, Jackie. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bye, everyone.